Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leah Smalley. I am the Assistant Director of Financial Aid Services at the Coordinating Board. And I'm so happy y'all were able to join me today, regardless of the technical issues. And I apologize for that. But I'm sure that with everyone working remotely here and there, it's kind of the, the new normal, right? So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the agenda today. Um, we do have a couple of reporting topics that I want to discuss with you. And so the first one that we're going to go through briefly is the 2019-20 Financial Aid Database Cycle 2. Um, secondly, I will be doing an overview of the online HelmNet reporting that is going to be coming soon. So this is more of a heads up and a quick walkthrough of the new system. And then lastly, I'll be doing my general updates uh, reminders and training updates. So let's get started with the FADS. So um, as you may be aware, the Cycle 1 FADS for 2019-20 was canceled. But as of June the 18th, we did send a formal notification out letting institutions know that Cycle 2 would begin. And as of June 22nd, 2020, the Cycle 2 did officially open for, for you to submit your files. Um, within that formal notification, we did communicate that there's a revised manual that you will want to download. So you can either get that within the memo or you can go to our Student Financial Aid Programs website and click on Online Resources. It is really important that you discard any old copies of your FAD manual or replace your favorites on your browser. Um, we do find that there's a lot of times when people contact us and they're using an old manual and so they're getting unnecessary errors just because they're not really familiar with how to resolve them or what's driving that error. So definitely take the time to replace any of the copies that you have. So as far as the updates that were included in that announcement, um, some of the things to be aware of were that within the manual, specifically in the file layout section, We've gone through and marked with the words update some of the important things that you'll want to um, be aware of and that are highlighted in those edits. So if you go into each page, you'll see those words and it's a lot easier to identify. The other big thing for cycle two that we wanted to make people aware of is that the reconciliation report that you download from MoveIt you'll no longer see the word error for cycle two. And the reason is because for the state financial aid program totals, you will not have to reconcile those for cycle two. You will still have to reconcile for cycle three though. So what that means is um, you may want to start on that proactively in cycle two, but you will not have to clear those state financial aid errors in order to validate. Now to clarify, you do still have to do the student level errors. So you will have to go through like you normally do and clear all of those, but it's the end process where you look at all the different program totals and um, you do that uh, reconciliation form that does not have to complete be completed for cycle two. Um, within that announcement, we did we did communicate that the student loan details report was uploaded. So you can still download that and go through the process for cycle two. It's just not a requirement. And again, it's really uh, an effort to be proactive so that once you get to cycle three, you're not scrambling to try and clear all these errors. It's really just a way to get an idea of what to expect, okay? The last thing within the announcement was to communicate that the program comparison report now reflects all financial aid programs. And if you're still new to FADS, just a clarification that the program comparison report is to show you a side by side from one year to the next for the same cycle so that you can see trends or, or drastic changes in your numbers. And that helps to determine if your data is accurate or if there's something that you need to revisit. So again, this is a really great tool that um, we want to make sure that schools utilize because data that is sent to us is used for a variety of reasons. So please make sure that you're taking a look at that report um, and not just skimming over it to, to see if there's something that needs to be fixed. Um, and lastly, yes, people we've been asked, you know, do we need to validate? And the answer is yes. The deadline to validate cycle two is August 28th. 
and I did the math this morning and it's just over six weeks. So uh, now that you don't have to do the full reconciliation of those program totals, um, that should be some relief, but we do know that the student level errors do take time. So please make sure that you're budgeting that time so you can get this done, done by the deadline. Okay, so moving on. I know y'all are so excited about the online HelmNet reporting. I've uh, been talking about it for a couple webcasts now. We've got um, a lot of schools that have been asking, when is it going to be available? And I'm happy to announce that we're in the final stages of testing and installation. So we do anticipate having it out soon. That's all I can tell you soon. But um, as soon as it's available, we'll be sending out a flyer, a formal announcement letting you know that you can now go in and run these reports. And then within that, we'll include some additional guidance. So for those of you who may be new or not familiar with HelmNet, it is the state's system that allows schools um, to go in and certify not only loan applications, but one of our scholarship programs. So um, once upon a time, there were reports available in the HelmNet system, but those were pulled down and they've been going through an enhancement process for well over a year now. And so we're just trying to um, get that up and running so that people can um, have some self-sufficiency and get their own reports instead of having to send a request to the coordinating board. We realize that that's not a time efficient or easy thing to do when you're running or administering these programs. You know, you want to be able to access information as you need it. So that's what this is going to accomplish. So let's take a look at um, the reporting instructions high level. Again, this whole thing is going to be high level. Um, we are in the final stages with the testing. We're creating an instruction manual for institutions to reference. And this instruction manual, the first few pages, is really just a how-to. It has some system tips. It has screenshots. It really just walks you through what to expect in the document um, and what to expect when you log in. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago, I am going to do a demo in just a few minutes. So you'll get to actually see what it's going to look like. Um, there are seven reports available in the system. Um, these do mirror the old reports. We try to recreate those because we know that schools that were using them find them valuable. So within those seven reports, we have a summary. We have a dispersed report. Whoops, we have the pending future disbursements. And we have a pending disbursements needs docs. Uh, certified applications in process certified, no allocated funds available, and pending school certification. So you may be looking at these and saying like, huh, I think I, I think I know what that is, but not quite sure. Some of those are a little mysterious for me, especially if you're not used to running the reports in the old, old uh, platform. Um, so I'm happy to tell you that in the instruction sheet, what the team did is they created little mini cheat sheets within it. So each report has its own dedicated page that helps clarify what the report is used for and what data it's going to extract. So when you pull that report, each column within the report is going to have a field name and a description. So that's how um, to interpret each of these. So if you really only do certification, you can pull the pending school certification report and you'll be able to see what all of these uh, descriptions and, and field names mean. Um, Okay, so once you're in the system, one of the things we did in the instructions that we're trying to make very clear is how to extract the information that you want. The data is driven based on two main factors. The first one is the program type, and the second one is the program year. The program type is simply the program. So we have three programs available in HelmNet that you can extract the data for. College Access Loan, Texas Armed Services Scholarship Program, and Be On Time. Be On Time is discontinued as of this upcoming award year, but you will still be able to pull historical information on BOT. So um, that is a good tool for you to be able to look at or pull things for auditing purposes or student records that you need to help clarify for a student. The other thing, the other factor that I mentioned is the program year. And this is the one that tends to cause the most issues um, when we do things like reconciliation or trying to understand data. 
the program year in HelmNet for these reports is tied to the state fiscal year. The state fiscal year runs from September 1st through August 31st. What this means is when you pull the report, the data consists of the student accounts with a loan period and date that falls within the year that you select. So what I did is I created some examples. I feel like if you're like me, you like to see pictures or some kind of explanation. So we have two examples that I'm going to go through. These are both summer examples, um, but the first one is for a header school. If you are familiar with the header and trailer concept, it depends on which school you work for. A header school uses summer as the beginning of their academic year. A trailer school uses summer as the end of their academic year. So in this first example, the header school, the loan period they set up for that, that summer term is June 20th of 2020 through August 25th of 2020. In your system, in your financial aid management or FAM system, you most likely have it coded as a 2021 loan, FY 2021. In our system at the coordinating board, we have it coded as FY 2020 because the fiscal year associated with that is September 1st of 2019 through August 31st of 2020. And this loan period ends oct uh, October, August 25th of 2020. So because this loan period ends right before the end of our fiscal year, it's coded that way in our system. So when you run the report for FY 2020, it's only gonna pull those loan periods that end between those dates. Um, similarly, at a trailer school. So a trailer school, similar situation, they have a loan period for summer and theirs just happens to extend all the way to September 2nd. In your system at your school, you most likely have that still coded as a 2019-20 or FY2020 loan. But in the coordinating board's website or in our system, we have it coded as FY2021. Again, because the loan period end date or goes beyond September 1st, it's going to now pull into that new award year. One thing to definitely also note is the disbursement dates do not impact the program year. They have no association. You're just looking at the end of the loan period. Now, if you work with FADS and you work with Helms and you do this all the time, you probably already are aware of this, but if you're newer to it, that can be a very frustrating experience when you're trying to align your system to our system. So this is a very key point to uh, make sure you understand that there are going to be times when you're going to need to run two different program years to get the data that you're that you're wanting. Okay, so moving on. Another thing to be aware of is in this new um, environment, the Internet Explorer browser is not compatible. You will still be able to log in, but it's not going to have all the functionality that it will in compatible browsers. So we recommend don't even try it. Um, you may really miss out on the information that you need. And the compatible browsers do include Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Safari. So all the main browsers are still supported. Internet Explorer is being phased out um, of most things these days. So it's, it's good to just start moving along in that process. Um, so make sure that you update your browser once you get the new link to the site. So let's do a little demo. Um, as you'll notice on the screen, this is the, the regular login screen. So I'm going to log in and once it pops up, I'm going to show you my browser is actually set to Internet Explorer. So you can see here, this was not linked properly and I did that on purpose so that I could show you. Um, and I'm trying to log in. Okay, so this is the main login screen. And I'm gonna do a quick check-in on my, my thing here just to make sure. Okay, I don't see any technological issues anymore. Okay, so let's log in here. All right, got my, 
my university in there. And when you log in, your university should pop up in this top left-hand corner. All of the left-hand menus should look familiar. Nothing changed except for this link right here. Previously, I believe it said school allocation reports or something with the word allocation. Um, it has been updated to say loan reporting. Again, this does include your TASP scholarship program, um, but this is just the way that the software is written, includes the word loan. Okay, so once you load that, a tab is gonna pop up and you've got your student loan reports here, which encompasses those seven that I mentioned. And then you also have your bot counseling report. And the bot counseling report is, again, going to be phased out, but if you need it to verify someone or for audit purposes, you can still reference that report, um, but eventually it would go away. But this is so that you can um, confirm if they did their module online, it pulls into this report. So the one that we're gonna be looking at today, as you'll notice, look, there's that reminder again, make sure you use one of these browsers. But once you click on this, it is going to launch a new tab. And within here, it's very self-explanatory. Your institution is gonna be pre-populated here. Um, your program year, based on, again, your loan periods, the end dates, you're gonna select the year. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 2020 since I wanna um, make sure I capture some data. And then the report name, I'm gonna do dispersed. And then the loan type, I'm doing college access loan. When you click on the search button, you do see a little note there that it could take up to 60 seconds as it compiles the results because it's coming directly from our main system, which is the Higher Education Loan Management System called HELMS. That's what I call the mothership. That's where all of the loans are um, stored, all the repayment information, that is our hub. And so it does take a little bit of time to pull that information from the system. So just please be patient. Again, there it goes. Um, if you have a larger loan portfolio, again, it's gonna be pulling more data. It's gonna take more time. Okay, so once it pops up, you're gonna see the report name here. So you can verify you pulled the right one. It'll have your university name, the program year, which we just talked about, and then the day and the time that you ran it. Some of the cool features to point out is um, you can sort it here so that you can show more than 50 results, you can go all the way up to 100, or you can do as few as 10. Um, you have some export features now, so that once you run the report, you can export that into CSV, you can put it in a PDF, or you can physically print the report now. Um, another thing to notice over here is a search box. You can do a search, for example, if you do the 100 um, option over here, and you're trying to find one particular student, you could type in that student's name. Um, you can type in a variety of different things on the screen, but it has to be identical to the field. And what I mean by that is, if you were trying to find, uh, let's see, $7,500, and you type in $7,500, nothing happens. If you add the comma in there, now all of a sudden those fields pop up. So it does take a kind of an exact match for it to find it, but it is still a nice tool if you have a very long list of students. Another feature is you've got these little sort filter buttons over here where you can um, change the order. You can do your disbursement roster in order at the date, a variety of different um, things there to make reviewing the report easier. And lastly, this is one of the coolest features is um, these reports are linked directly in Helmnet since they're all within the same portal. So when you click on Buzz Lightyear, it's going to take a second to load, but what it's doing is it's actually going to his account and it's going to show you the status of Buzz Lightyear and any loans associated with him or scholarships. So in this example, you can see you know, Buzz up here and then you've got your college access loan. It goes directly to the borrower summary and you could click on this to show that um, application checklist. It's thinking. Okay, so you can see here where the student status is, and then you can easily go back to your report by clicking on the tab at the top. There it is. So again, one quick thing to note, if you work in HelmNet often, you, you may know this, but if you're newer to it, you can only open five tabs at a time. So if you're toggling back and forth, keep that in mind that at a certain point, you're gonna get cut off and you're gonna get an error message. Um, so make sure you close it out by clicking this red X and then it'll take you back to your report. 
Okay, so let's just pretend we're going to download this report. So I just want to show you what it looks like as it pops up. And it's going to load it in Excel, even though it's CSV, they're compatible, so it pulls that up. Okay, and so once you pull it up, um, if you're a big Excel person, you, you may know this, but if you, if you don't work in Excel a lot, please note that um, these hashtag symbols just mean that the columns are standard and you need to expand them. You can either do that by dragging it, or you can double click in between the lines and it'll make them bigger, but that way you can see all the data within there. Once you have this run, you can then save it um, and do whatever you need to then process these loans or get them updated and contact these students if there's some type of student intervention that's needed. So that is a very quick demo of the new system. Let me make sure and circle back here and make sure there's nothing else I wanted to show you. I believe that was it. Again, I will be doing more training on the individual loan reports and going through this again and allowing people to actually ask more detailed questions. Um, if you have some questions um, right now, you can go ahead and type those. Um, I can either answer them, but I also have Natalie uh, on the phone. Natalie, I'm going to butcher your last name again. She just got married. Tarunin, I can't say it. It's okay. Natalie <laughs> has been instrumental in the launch of this project, and so she's very familiar with all the ins and outs of it. So I will let her answer some of those questions if I can't. Um, but you may be wondering if you're new or if you don't have access to Helm, how do I actually get access? What if I need these reports? And um, the answer, if I can get back to my PowerPoint, uh, there we go, is that the director needs to submit a system authorization form. You'll go to the online resources section on SFAP and the last one in the list here is the form. Once you fill it out, it's sent over to our team to review and they will create an account in HelmNet and then email the new user and then also let the director know that that account's been established. So that's how you go about getting access to this portal if you don't have it and you need it. So that is HelmNet in a nutshell with the new features. Again, I will send out um, not only an announcement once it's available, you'll also have the instructions, but we'll do some follow-up training that will be dedicated just to HelmNet um, and the loan, I keep saying loan reporting, it's uh, online reporting that's going to be available. Coming soon. All right, so moving on to our reminders and updates. Um, these are, again, more general topics but just to keep you posted. Um, for the past couple of months, we've been requesting that if you want to complete an authority to transfer from your Texas College of Work Study or your Work Study Student Mentorship Program, you do have to submit a request for that. The deadline has since passed, but we still have a, a quite a few outstanding documents and refunds that are necessary to make those transfers. So we have reached out to the directors of each of the schools to um, communicate that we still need these, but we're getting close on time. So we're not going to be able to complete the transfer if we don't get everything in time. So please, if you submitted a request, please check to see if you've received an, um, a follow-up email. It would be from Joella Martinez. And please respond with the information that she needs or return the funding so that we can transfer that over for you. Um, and the preliminary allocations that were sent out for a 10-day review, that has since been closed as well. That's for the 2021 year. I uh, just wanted to communicate that that process has been completed, but we are still reviewing the feedback that we've received, and we are still getting a lot of questions um, related to the allocation. So we're looking at those. If you have anything specific, please send that in so that our management team can review that. Um, the TEG Engagement Guide for 2019-20 was released on June 23rd. Um, the deadline for that is next April, so you do have some time. We did try and get that out earlier based on feedback that we received from the institution, so hopefully you can hand that over to your audit team and, and start the process for 1920. Um, also based on feedback was the Comprehensive Program Guidelines. I did a poll, I think, last webcast or the one before, 
just asking, you know, do schools actually use the comprehensive version of the guidelines? And I got a pretty good response. So we did create that document and it's online under the program resource page under the SFAP web, web page. Um, so you can go get those now. And lastly, an update on net price calculator. The college student budgets have been completed. They were due on July 1st. Um, we are, was it, yeah, I believe it was July 1st. It may have been June 1st. So I apologize for not having that date on hand. Um, but now that the date has passed, um, we're in the rollover process for our programmers. And so once we get that done, we'll be communicating with institutions that you can upload your net price calculator information for the next year. Um, if you do have questions, or if you're not currently set up with NetPrice Calculator in your private institution, um, please reach out and we can help you through that process. If you're a public school, you're required to participate in NetPrice Calculator. So um, again, if you have questions, if you're new, just reach out and we can go through that with you. As far as upcoming training goes, um, like I've mentioned, I don't know how many times now, I'm going to be doing online Helm Net reporting. So, I'll send out the dates and times that that's going to be available. Um, hopefully going to record it similar to these webcasts so that people can access them at a later point. Um, I just don't have a lot of details yet. So I just say coming soon. So check back and we'll let you know. And then of course the next monthly webcast will be August 11th. Um, we don't have any of the topics yet, but I will be sending those out and um, it will be posting those on our webcast page. And lastly, our contact us. Um, last month, I decided not to do like a full reminder on this, um, but this month I decided to do it, and that is because our phone line is still not operational right now, but we are working to get it up and running. But what that has meant is that we are getting an influx of inquiries, right? So, and we appreciate those inquiries, but. A couple of the challenges are one, because of the increase, I wanted to um, just make people aware of the timeline that you know we're processing those requests as, as quickly as we can. Um, but because we're seeing a higher volume, they're taking longer than they usually do. And so please be patient with our team. You know, they're really trying hard to get through them. You know, with this virtual environment, I think it's affecting everyone across the planet. Um, but definitely in financial aid, it's a very stressful situation for students and schools because you need those answers. So again, we do appreciate your patience as we work through them. Um, but I just do, I wanted to go through this one more time because um, we're still seeing inquiries going um, through the wrong channels. And what I mean by that is one, we're still seeing emails going directly to individuals versus through contact us. And the reason that that is difficult is because we've had people change, just like at the institutions, people get promoted, they move, um, they, they move around structurally in our organization. So we're still getting some emails coming from other areas of the agency. So I wanted to just reinforce a couple of people that have moved out of financial aid services. They're still within the agency, but they're not in our, in our area that deals with these um, programs. So the first one is Sheba Spears. Sheba has moved to our internal audit area. So if you're used to emailing Sheba on anything, please make sure that you take her off your contact list and move into this web form instead. Um, another individual is Renee Jones. Um, she oversaw a lot of different things for our area and she has moved to our borrower services area and helps with the uh, student loan programs. Um, and finally, Glenna Howell, she was also a uh, representative in our area that moved to borrower services. So if you're used to reaching out to any of these individuals, um, please make sure to use this web form instead so that we can ensure that we're getting back to you timely and they're not just kind of sitting in someone's email box. Um, and even more importantly, because it's summertime and a lot of people are on vacation and, and not readily available to answer emails. Okay, so let's talk about contact us for I don't know, the third month in a row. <laughs> but because this is our primary, primary way of contact, I feel like it's really critical that we go through it. So when you click on the Contact Us web form, which is located on any of our websites, you can click Contact Us and this form pops up. You can use it for a variety of different requests. So 
Um, the loan reporting request, which eventually will go away once that um, online reporting is available. But until then, those still have to be submitted through Contact Us. Also, loan processing changes. So if you need loan periods updated, you need um, something canceled, all of those still go through Contact Us. And then state financial aid program eligibility. We get a lot of things through um, there that help us identify training needs and um, it helps us have those dialogues with different schools. So it's very helpful. So those are some of the reasons why you would use the Contact Us form. Um, now, when you're filling it out, again, I feel like I repeat it over and over, but that's okay because every single webcast, I have new people joining. So I feel like I'm reaching someone every time. <laughs> so when you're filling out this web form, first and foremost, please mark institution. That helps us know, um, again, who needs to answer this question and who it's coming from. Typing in the institution name is very important because we have different teams that work on different institution types. We have certain people that work on community colleges, others work on universities, technical schools, all of that matters. It slows things down when we don't know who the school is and it takes that much longer. Um, the contact reason, this is by far the most critical piece. Okay, so I know y'all are all focusing Financial aid question is the drop down choice that you need to select. And the reason this is so critical is because the way this software program works is it routes it to a certain department within our agency. And financial aid question is related to our area. Um, when you click on the drop down list, there's a variety of different things in there. Um, but, and they may seem like they are related to what you're trying to find out. But if it's in any way related to um, the things that you normally do for eligibility for state financial aid programs, um, if there are loan questions related to your school, all of those things need to be routed through financial aid questions, nothing else. And then what that will do is it will route it directly to our area instantaneously, and then we can issue it out to someone on our team. Unfortunately, if you select something else, I've seen it take a week to get to us. So, um, you know, we don't have a lot of control over the other areas that um, have to issue out these, these inquiries. So I hope that that helps clarify and why it's so important. But um, moving on to staying connected with us. Um, I've mentioned this as well, and I've mentioned this throughout my presentation, that we send out formal notifications through our SFAP listserv. And the reason that this is important is because um, we don't use just general email to send out things that are formal. We have to use this state software. So if you are not on it, you may miss something that's critical. So um, if you're wondering, you're like, I've never heard of that before, you'll want to check and you can go onto our student financial aid programs webpage, go into the Stay Connected page, and then what I just circled is the um, listserv form. This form will pop up and you fill it in completely. And then based on your title and the type of school you're affiliated with, we'll put you in the appropriate topic listing. And that way you start getting all the notices, uh, flyers, anything that's important, we'll send those out to you. Um, and then of course, also on the Stay Connected page, we have all of the recent communications. So. Let's just say you know, you've been out on vacation and you've got a million emails to dig through. This is a place where you could go more quickly just to see what has been um, sent out because we put all the notifications on our website. So it's kind of like you can, you can reconcile and just make sure you've received everything. And then also on this page, we have the webcast. When you click on that, we have all the archived webcasts on there so you can go back and look at the topic listing so you can get up to speed on things. I had a lot of information. Um, the last thing I wanted to communicate is I think a few months ago uh, I mentioned that we had an open position and we have since filled that position and we have a new program specialist. Her name is Laura DeGrush. She is actually on the call with us today, but I just wanted to, you know, say a special shout out to her. We're so thrilled that she joined our team. She's going to be um, contributing to all the resource documents and training and the website um, as the other program specialists we have on our team, which includes Sophia Rodriguez, Troy Lang Johnson, and Michelle Fairbanks. Um, 
Financial Aid Services also has our operations team, and uh, we're making some uh, additions and changes over there too, which I mentioned a few months ago. So it's really exciting to see these changes. Um, our team is has evolved a lot over the past few years, and I'm just thrilled that we're going to have even more resources available for y'all. So I just wanted to put that out there that, you know, that position is now filled and, um, you know, you'll be seeing Laura's name and all the people in operations more and more as the months continue because we're really starting to get involved in institution related um, interactions. So I think that's all I have. I see my Skype lighting up at the bottom, but I'm going to move forward to this last page. This is my friendly request that you know, if you have something that is specific to my webcast that you want to ask me, you can do that. Again, I highly recommend you use Contact Us so that if I'm out of the office or it's something more general, that that can be routed on to someone more appropriate. Um, but again, I always like to at least put mine out there in case you have feedback that you want to send me directly. And then I have a webcast survey that I always value. I look at them uh, each month. I have that pulled and I look at it. And then um, there's our contact us link. I'm really trying to drive that home if you're not getting the getting the message there. So uh, that is all I have for today. I really apologize for the technical issue, but look at that. It's only 303 and we made it through. Um, if you can stay on the line for the question and answer session, we'll go through those. Um, if you have to drop off, I understand, but this is recorded. So I will get it updated and posted online if you need to circle back later and, and look at those questions. So with that, let me go back over to my webcast just to see what we've got. I see some comments. Hopefully Deshay has been able to answer those or Natalie. I'm going to try your name again, Turinin. Did I say it right? I apologize if I did. Um, okay. So Deshay, if you can write in the text box, are there any pending questions that I need to circle back on? Are they all addressed? No questions. Looks like we're good. Okay, well, this is everyone's last chance. You still got me for another minute. Uh, says no pending questions. Uh, Natalie said I said her name correctly. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, well, I hope that this was useful. Again, more training to come, uh, new webcast next month, and hopefully we won't have any issues. I appreciate all the, the comments and emails letting me know that there was the issue earlier. Um, but look at that, we, we made it. We did it, smooth sailing, and I hope you all have a fantastic week. I will talk to you next month, and stay safe out there. Have a good one.